And I think this is maybe one of the reasons why the Great Resignation is sort of taking place, right? I think a lot of people bought into this tech idea of like, my career is my life, right? Um, I'm going to go work at Google. They give me lunch and dinner while I'm there. I never leave the office. I'm always on campus kind of a thing to this sort of wake up call that there really are no secure jobs. There really are no, you know, uh, for sh like certainties in, in general. And um, I know we've been talking about the Great Resignation a lot. It's being talked about in the media a lot. But for anyone who might not know what the Great Resignation is, can one of you give maybe a quick synopsis of it? And, and how do you think it's, or what do you think it tells us about employee empowerment right now? Yeah. Um, so from my perspective, coaching on kind of a daily basis, um, I think that it's about people having light bulbs. <laughs> Many light bulbs go off during COVID around like, oh my goodness, there's more to life. There's like life and death issues. And I can't keep putting off till tomorrow, next week, next year, my rethink on what I might do and my sort of own marriage or commitment to doing work that's meaningful for me. And so I've seen it with my own clients, like just more, I mean, I've been doing this for many years. I've never seen so many people want to do deep, deep rethinks and be willing to even say like, look, I'm going to risk the salary. You know, like I'm going to, I'm going to risk the financial piece because this is that important. And so I think, you know, I have, I also coach employers and so they're kind of coming to you like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't even have enough time to make a decision to offer someone a job. They've already gotten two offers. And I think from my perspective, you know, and, and Lauren, perhaps, you know, this is ultimately probably a good thing. Thing because the power differential has really been so skewed in the workplace in a way that just isn't real. I mean, ultimately, both parties, employer, staff have to be satisfied in order to work together. But the whole way the recruitment process is set up, annual reviews, like the whole thing is just super skewed. Um, and so I'm an idealist a little bit. I'm hoping that this injects more truth into the reality of what this relational dynamic is, which is really equal, because I do see all people as equal, doesn't matter what your position is, and that it's about really job seekers taking the time to know themselves better and then reapply, reinject themselves into the workforce in a more specific way that aligns with their unique value and employers taking this as a like note to self, like how do we create a more um, vibrant, fair, dynamic workplace that retains you know, these human beings who we're working with all day long and all week and sometimes all weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, I, I agree with everything you said, Kathy. I think people are just tired. They're tired of maybe trying on or working in a job that just doesn't really do it for them, or they're tired of the dynamics with a work colleague or a manager. And and now with, I think, some in some parts of the world, the economy opening up and they're, and they're feeling like there's more jobs available. Um, I think the power dynamic is shifting a bit more towards candidates or job seekers who are looking for opportunities and with COVID, it's just like, it's been almost two years. It will be two years in March, 2022. And I think it's just like, as Kathy said, the it's so profound uh, to be even be alive and to have the choice of how you work and where you spend your time and who you spend your time with. Yeah. So I think it's really palpable right now for a lot of people. You even just saying it's been two years, just... Uh... I haven't thought about it in those terms in a while. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, you're right. It's been two years and it really has changed how people view the world and view themselves and interact. And I think, I think in ways that we don't even fully, you know, haven't fully comprehended yet how that has changed our feelings of identity, our feelings of connectedness, our feelings of work and things like that. And I'm, you know, I think it's so interesting, um, you know, 
with this, there's going to be a lot more flexibility with hybrid work in the future. And there's going to be hopefully more flexibility in changing careers in the future. And, and I'm, I like that you called out the employer perspective here, because I think sometimes it can get very us against them with the job seekers and the employers. And I think um, it's important to have like empathy for employers as well, because although the hiring practices are probably far too complex than they need to be, you know, I'm working with someone right now and they've had six interviews just to get like an entry level sales role at a gym. And it's like, that should be one conversation, maybe. <laughs> like that, the, this is kind of insane how companies are just, and, and there's plenty of reasons why, right? There's death by committee, there's um, a lot of risk. And I think a lot, what people don't understand, what job seekers maybe don't fully understand about companies is that the job seekers coming from a place of stress, maybe a layoff, maybe, you know, been job searching a while, but companies are also coming from this place of fear and anxiety and lacking and stress as well, because they're trying to fill a role to accomplish a goal or to fix a problem that's happening. They're not coming from this, like, we just have money, let's give it to people. Like, that's not ever <laughs> what I've heard a company say. It's always like, we need someone yesterday. Depending, we... on, the, the, depending on the startup and technology fair, sector you're fair, in, but fair. yes, but yes. <laughs> and, and so I'm kind of curious, you know, with this whole great resignation thing, um, have you seen anything going on on the employer side that you think is going to be lasting? Because I do feel that with the people that I'm talking with who are in the job search, I think there's a certain echelon of, of workers who, yeah, right now, if you want to be a senior marketer somewhere and you want to move from a senior marketing role to another senior marketing role, it's a snap. Um, but there's also a lot of entry level folks or you know, the coding industry for entry level folks is, is still, I don't know, it depends on who you are. It's kind of difficult to break into. And I almost look at it from the perspective of social skills. Those with great social skills are getting eaten up in jobs. Like they're just getting picked and picked and picked and they can get promotions and, and jump roles. But people who are really introverted or nervous or uh, having a difficult time building that external village of, of support are still struggling quite a bit. And then they hear all this great resignation stuff about the empowerment of the job seeker and maybe get a little frustrated by it. Um, what sort of things are you seeing in the different types of people that the, you know, the great resignation is maybe favoring certain industries or not favoring others? And what might someone do to kind of improve their positioning in this, in this great resignation world? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think from my perspective, the most fundamental thing is really going back to yourself and what you know about yourself. I mean, especially for introverts, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's such a world and a work world that favors extroversion. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it used to be pretty balanced. But now it's just like great favoring across many industries. And so I think that's been hard for people who are more introverted, which is probably about half the population. Um, and so I think, you know, whether you're introverted or extroverted, whatever sector you're from, I do think knowing what your unique value is, not pushing for the sell yourself. Oh, it's the great resignation. Now I really have to sell myself. <laughs> But more like, okay, this is a pause for at least some industries. And I don't know that I'm seeing clear trends. I mean, I definitely think there's certain positions such as the one you mentioned, but I'm seeing it fairly random. Generally, higher level positions are benefiting more from the great resignation and, you know, more entry level less because of the power dynamics. It's sort of the same dynamic that's always operative, but I think like not seeing this like, okay, now I really have to get my tap dance routine perfect, but more like, oh, what a great time to start my morning ritual, as Lauren mentioned, you know, and how can I 
really think about given the needs that are so pressing now across industry and position, how I am uniquely positioned to serve and contribute. So how can I, in a way, be a journalist of myself rather than a salesperson in this sort of free for all market? Yeah, and I think um, with employers, I think there's some goodness that has happened in the last two years with COVID, right? You talked about remote work and virtual work and just the shifting dynamic of people and where, where they're able to work, right? I think that's benefited a lot more for, been a bigger benefit for knowledge workers. And I think that you know, there's been a, a bigger investment in mental health and well being inside organizations on the whole that I'm seeing from even a benefits brokerage perspective um, and also, you know, investment in diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives. And I think that, you know, there's, there's been some good movement from an employer perspective around, you know, what, what employee experience should look like inside an organization. Um, and certainly that just depends on the resources that you have. If you're an, you know, a under-resourced nonprofit, you might be feeling the strain right now more acutely because maybe the funding has shifted in a different direction given the nature of all the you know social economic political dynamics that have happened in just the last um two years so i think it's it's you know first i, I agree with kathy that it's i think it has um, impacted and been more positive for folks who are in some more you know mid senior level roles um because there's i feel like there's a, more of a a demand for certain skill sets. And I, I think like the, the, the overarching skill set of being able to um, be emotionally savvy or emotionally aware, some people might call emotional intelligence, um, definitely serves everybody. Um, and also like we have to acknowledge that the manufacturing industry and, and supply chain has, has been disrupted in the last couple of years. And so some of the jobs that were available like aren't. So I think um, I, I selfishly, I work for a company degree that focuses on learning and upskilling. And so we're always talking about how do we make sure that people have transferable skills. And Kathy and I talk about this in the book as well, um, but really kind of looking at the, your skill sets as a whole and helping to translate that and, and make sure that it fits within the, where there is energy and opportunity.